Hello, my name is Tony Stockman and me and my students do research into how to use audio to enable people to interact effectively with computer systems. Why audio, you might ask? Well, so much information these days is represented visually and there's often situations where people can suffer from visual overload or they're not really able to use that information effectively when it's presented in a visual form. For example, stock market traders are often uh, asked to look at multiple screens to track uh, changes in stock prices and it's just physically impossible to cover all that visual information. So we can use audio to draw attention to key events or emerging trends in the data and help them focus um, visually where they need to, to to get the key information. Similarly, we can use a very similar technology to enable visually impaired users to listen to graphs uh, or to parts of spreadsheets in order to uh, get uh, some overall information as opposed to navigating each single cell or part of a graph um, uh, using a screen reader. We use knowledge from psychoacoustics, so how um, we uh, actually hear and process information to design auditory displays that deliver information um, in a way that's uh, relevant and, and when it's required um, as well as not being distracting. One area we work in is known as extreme navigation. Developing and evaluating systems that support people who can't use vision fully or even at all to get around. Users of these types of systems include cyclists, joggers, rock climbers and members of the emergency services, all of whom may have less than full, a full field of vision at any given time, or people who may need to use uh, their eyes to perform other tasks, as well of course as uh, visually impaired or uh, partially sighted pedestrians. For example, we developed a cycling sonification which notifies cyclists of the next one or two turns uh, in order that uh, they can anticipate uh, turns that may, may, may need to make, particularly where those turns occur close together. So we use a reference tone and identify if they've got a turn to the right by playing a note uh, higher than the reference tone and how much higher determines the angle of the turn, tells them how sharp the bend is going to be. And similarly for a left turn, uh, it's a note below that reference note. Um, our audio map system enables visually impaired people to explore different areas of the world. Um, for example, they can uh, navigate streets um, just in you know, free exploration mode, or they can set specific routes in order to learn them before walking them. And uh, in that uh, sonification of specific routes, the, the system notifies them of points of interest along the way. Another area in which we work is using audio for sports training. For example, there's an equipment called a German wheel, which is a, a piece of gymnastic equipment which gymnasts use for making wheels by standing in the wheel and using their body to move the wheel, uh, in, uh, uh, rotating it into different positions. This involves highly dynamic movements uh, which involve fast changes of visual perspective which means that it's hard to use vision to make judgments about what position you're in at any one time. So, as well, of course, the, the timing of the movements is really critical because you need to get the balance of your body weight dead right in order to perform the moves effectively. So we designed an auditory display which enables people uh, to, to be aware of the exact position of their body and the wheel in order that they can perform moves more effectively. In general, the growth of small devices such as mobile phones and iPods is, making, uh, is, is always increasing the opportunities we're finding for exploring how best to use audio in order to enable people to carry out tasks often when on the move. 